Okay, so here we are with question number 17, part A, uh, from February, March 2017, paper 2, variant 2. Um, we are here, we have a Venn diagram. It tells us about this Venn diagram, we need to fill it in. The information they told us that there are a total of 20 trucks that were tested at a checkpoint. So, all together in this rectangle and these two circles here, there must be 20 items altogether. We know that six trucks failed the test for brakes, B. So B represents the trucks that failed the test for brakes. And L represents, okay, the trucks that failed the test for lights. Okay, so that's what B represents. The, the six trucks, there's going to be six trucks in this circle, and there's going to be seven trucks in this circle. And there's nine trucks that have passed the test for both brakes and lights. So they, they must be obviously the ones that are on the outside. There's nine trucks that pass the test for brakes and pass the test for lights as well. So they're going to be outside the two circles. So what's outside the two circles represents those that, that basically passed the tests, didn't fail any of the tests. Okay, but they're still within those 20 trucks that were tested. All right, so now, what we need to do now, oops, what we need to do now is try and figure out what goes in these circles. Okay, now, this type of question is quite common. There's 20 trucks altogether. Six of them fail the test for brakes. Seven of them fail the test for lights. And nine of them pass the test for both of them. Now, if we were to add these together, we get 13 plus 9, which is 22. Now, some people say, hold on, there's 20 trucks, and here's there's 22 trucks. How is that possible? Well, two of the trucks obviously failed both the tests for brakes and the lights. They're the ones that's been counted twice. From these six and these seven, two of them are counted twice. So there's two trucks that failed both the test for brakes and also the test for lights. Right, now we can fill in the rest of the... the Venn diagram quite easily because we know that in the circle B, the ones that fail the test for brakes, there must be six altogether. That means there must be four in this region here. And in the test for the test for lights, there were seven that failed altogether. So there must be five in this region here. That gives us seven in the circle for failing the lights, six in the circle for failing the brakes, and nine outside of both those circles, the ones that pass both tests. And to make sure to make fully sure of that we've done the right thing we can add these numbers together and they should add up to 20 so 9 plus 4 is 13 plus 2 is 15 plus 5 is 20 so we know we're on the right tracks there okay so that is the complete venn diagram then it says find the number of elements in b complement intersection l complement now what region is this okay this is intersection intersection you can think of as being Mr. Frowny Face is strict. It must be satisfying both of the conditions on either side. So it must be outside of B. It has to be outside of this circle. And it must be also outside of L. So it must also be outside of this circle. Now the only area which is outside of B and also outside of L is the area between the circles and the inside of the rectangle. So there's nine items in that region. So there's going to be nine here. Because it's asking us for the number of elements in that region. There's nine. Okay, the numbers here stand for how many trucks are in that region. Okay, so that's what we have to understand by this. And this is actually the same as B union L in brackets complement. Same as whatever's outside these two circles. It's another way of writing. Okay, notice that how the sign changes from frowny face to smiley face. Okay, now part B. In the Venn diagram, shade the region P, union Q, intersection Q, complement. Now, they're trying to confuse us here, okay, with this section here, but actually it's pretty simple. All right, so first of all, we got P, union Q, okay, that's part of it. Intersection with Q, complement. Now, intersection, remember, again, he's frowny face, right, so it has to be outside of Q. So whatever we shade cannot be inside Q, it has to be outside of Q. So in no circumstance can we shade anything in Q. And the other, the other condition is P union Q. It has to be inside P union Q. Okay. So now we've got to shade the part of P union Q. P union Q means it can either be in P or in Q. It could be any of these two, basically the whole of these two circles. 
but I can't just shade that because I've got this. So it's whatever's part of these two circles, okay, whatever part of these two circles that is outside of Q, we shade. So it's actually going to be shading this region here, okay, which is something like they're trying to confuse you because this is something that we know most most times they will ask a question like this is P intersection Q complement. That's exactly the same as this. These two are exactly the same shading, all right? I have to just think a bit logically, that's all. So there's your answer for for this question. So it has to be outside of Q. So you can in no circumstances shade Q, but it must be inside P union Q. Alright? So it's a part of P union Q that is outside of Q, which is only this part of P. Okay? Alright. So there we have our um, answer to this question. Question number 19, 17, sorry. And uh, thank you for listening.